In the previous lessons, we looked at how we could populate a spreadsheet for the application timeline JS. So we went into our research and we found some kings and queens of England and we started populating our data within the spreadsheet. You download the template from Timeline JS, then you populate that spreadsheet accordingly. In the previous lesson, we looked at how we could create a URL for our own images. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to create a Google form that will enable us to then collect the data into a spreadsheet for Timeline JS. The first thing we're going to do is go to New and then we'll go to More and create a Google form. So let's say OK to this and let's give our form a title. I'm going to call it Baby Ella. This is a timeline for my daughter. Now our first question needs to emulate the fields from the template spreadsheet from Timeline JS. So I've created one here. This is a copy of the template and these are the, all the fields that we've got here. So what we need to do, our form needs to ask the same questions. So the first four questions are year, month, day and time. So let's create four questions with that. So question one is going to be year. We make it a short answer. It's going to be required. And we need to choose data validation and it has to be a whole number. So once we've done our first one, the first question has to be required. So we need to be required. So let's choose, let's now duplicate this and the duplicate is not required and we need this to be month. We can now duplicate this again and make this day. So now we've got year, month and day. And for the time, we just need to add a new question, type in time, make this a short answer. And this time we don't need to do data validation because the time will involve a colon. So now let's go back to our, our spreadsheet. And we require this time an end year, end month, end day, and end time. So let's go back to our form and we create a new question. We want it to be a short answer and end year. Now these ones are not required, so we don't need to do anything with that. But data validation does need to happen and we need it to be a whole number again. We can duplicate this and we have end month. We can duplicate it again, end day. And finally, we need a time one. So we add a new question, end time, short answer, and there we go. Then we need to continue and add the rest of these fields. So I'm going to do this very quickly now and go through, but we need to add a, a question for display date, headline, text, etc., etc. For the group field, what I've done here is I've added some hint text. To add the hint text, what you do is you go down to this option and you click on hint text here. So I've added the hint text and I've said, enter how you would like to group your data. So for example, if you are creating a class timeline, this may be the student, the student's name. So then all of your, all of this particular student will be grouped together. So this is a good way of grouping the different things if you're doing a class timeline. Okay, so we've created our form and we've used all the fields from the spreadsheet here. And we've gone through all of them here. What I've done in addition is I've used the hint text on all of these and put some hints to the questions and whether they're optional. And as you can see down here, as you go through, it tells you what is expected to be entered into these particular fields. Okay, so you can see I've done that in all of the questions down at the bottom. In the next lesson, we're going to look at how you can now link this with the spreadsheet and then import that into Timeline.js.